Good day, everyone. Welcome to Vanish Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pete Castanis. This is episode 91, season four. Today's date is December 23rd, 2021. And today I have a, another Christmas episode to discuss with you today. And thank you for thank you for joining me. And right now the program will go into commercial. And this program is brought to you by Hershey's Kisses. And we all know this Christmas commercial. And they've been playing this every year since, I'm not exactly sure, probably the late 80s. So sit back and enjoy. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> okay, everybody, I am back. I hope you enjoyed that commercial for Hershey's Kisses, that Christmas one. Uh, I said before, uh, According to some sources, that first aired in 1989, but I believe it aired before that, probably 86, 85, 86, around there. And it has been airing during the holiday season ever since. I, I guess it's due to popularity. People love it. And, you know, and in the big, as you heard in the commercial in the beginning, there's a guy uh, coughing. So he's probably like a conductor, you know, <clears throat> like that. And then, uh, then, 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 and then at the end, then you have one uh, Hershey kiss ringing all by itself. Ding, 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 like that. It's cute. It really is cute. Okay. Today I will discuss on episode 91, uh, Soleno, Jingle cookies, uh, they're those Christmas cookies we see every year. Uh, I'll go a little more detail for that. Also, I'm going to discuss eggnog from some companies that were in Chicago, uh, still make eggnog. Uh, but I will talk about uh, dairy companies that no longer exist. They used, they used to make eggnog. And also I'll talk about a couple of traditions, uh, Christmas con- tr- Christmas traditions. I'm, I'm sure they're still around, but uh, I'm going to talk about a, a couple of mine, you know, because uh, Christmas is two days away and it should be fun. Okay. First off, we'll talk about Solano Jingle Cookies. Now, uh, according to some uh, sources, uh, the cookies first came out in Chicago where their factory was located on Division on Division Street, uh, and I, I don't, it's a street west of Pulaski, I think Kildare, I'm not sure exactly, I think Costner around there. Uh, the date that we released was November 26, 1952, um, and uh, once uh, they were in the stores, stocked up, they were very popular, people loved them. They really did. Uh, I remember eating them when I was little. Uh, not too often because my mother makes homemade Greek ones, of course. <laughs> so um, I don't think she ever bought these. The other Christmas cookies that a lot of people look forward to was Maurice Lanel or Lanel. That's how people pronounce that. They made wonderful Christmas cookies. And uh, let's see. And then um, They've been doing those, uh, they've been making those jingles for a long time. And then, but, you know, uh, things have changed. And then uh, they changed the packaging. And uh, first it was the jingles. Then around in the mid-1970s, it, first it came in a green cellophane wrapper. Then it came in a white one uh, decorated with snowflakes, a holly, nice, beautiful red ribbon. And then... Um, when, when Salerno uh, hired uh, this man, and he worked for Sh- Sunshine Biscuit Company, which is uh, famous for their Hydrox cookies. And uh, what was the other one? Hi-Ho crackers and cheese, you know, cheese it, which is still around, but they keep changing companies. And, uh, and he launched the, the uh, jingles under the Sunshine brand. And I sort of remember that. And a lot of people complain just the same way as Cereal Cookies. They don't taste the same. They changed the recipe. 
I think it's because of trans fats and, you know, it's, uh, it's bad for you to eat. I understand that. And, uh, so, uh, then, um, then Keebler bought him and, uh, well, no, Keebler did not buy him. And then, uh, they made their own, they made their own jingles. I'm not sure exactly. Uh, so anyway, uh, then now they still make them. They still do. So Laurel makes them. Um, they're called, uh, Santa's favorite original holiday recipe, uh, and it's anise flavor. But, you know, according to some people on Facebook, uh, if I post something from Salerno, you know, like they're the old products, they complain that the recipe has changed. And it's true. They have. Because same with the butter cookies. I don't know. No trans fat. But uh, I don't know. That's a shame. Because uh, the other one, uh, the other cookies they had was uh, almond crescent. And of course, Salerno made those, and uh, but I haven't seen those lately, and I, I don't think they're around. Maybe I don't know. I have to go to the supermarket just to be a little more observant, like that. And of, and of course, so you know, Salerno is uh, it's a Chicago is one of Chicago's best. Uh, they don't make them here anymore, which is a shame. I wish they'd bring back the company, the factory, and the recipe, and we're all will be very content, very content indeed. Okay. Next up I will talk about is eggnog from Van Chicago Land Stories. Now, uh, let's start with egg. Start uh, my personal experience of eggnog. I, I love eggnog. I really do. But uh, to most people, it's fattening. People don't like the milk-based drink. You know, but it's once a year. But I love it. But some people like it with the... Uh, Nutmeg or liqueur, they put brandy, vodka, uh, anything. I don't, I'm not a drinker, so I tried it with once with liquor. I I didn't care for it. Also, uh, but I like, uh, you know, or like if you like eggnog on the rocks or uh, without it, you know, straight. And I I drink eggnog and I just drink drink it straight. And uh, I don't. You know, don't have much, but it's very fattening. It really is. It really is. But you know, one once in a while, I would if I had some in the house, I would drink it at night because it's very relaxing. You know, it's like milk. You know, because milk calms you down. And uh, so, you know, either you like it or you don't. If you make it homemade, I saw that on WGN. Uh, Dean Richards made a recipe of that that looked absolutely delicious. It looked awesome. You know, so and uh, you know, but. But it's great to have eggnog when you have company over and you put it in a, like a punch bowl, you know, and you have the serving cups, you know, and the ladle and you help yourselves. And so the companies that used to make eggnog, uh, I can think of a few. Now, Jewel, uh, they had their own dairy section called Hill Farm. They had Boo Burke, and they, but they had Hill Farm. And I remember they made their own eggnog. I never tried it. Um, Dominic's had their own, I, I think Herit, it was their brand heritage house. I remember that. Um, like other grocery stores, uh, they carried it like high, low foods, uh, national foods. I don't know if they made their own. Probably. Probably did. Um, maybe Eagle food centers. Uh, I think it was top of my head. I don't know what, uh, I'm talking about grocery stores. So, uh, oh, Kroger. Crookers are on, uh, but in other parts of the country. Uh, so the dairy companies here in Chicago that made the eggnog every year was uh, one. It was called Wanzer Dairy. Their their plant was located on West Carfields Boulevard and west of uh, State Street in the, on the south side of Chicago. And... Uh, they had a couple of plants on the south side. They had one on the north, and uh, Wanzer milk was wonderful. It really was, and uh, we know how that goes. It's um, you know that saying that sterling silver. I forgot how to say it. I can't think of it on the top of my head. You know, I will talk about Wanzer dairy on another episode. I'll go in more detail. Yeah, forgive me for that. And uh, because I uh, I don't remember my mother buying that. You know, that uh, particular milk, 
probably i don't know anyway uh also the company that uh, in chicago hawthorne melody which has our dairy located up in vernon hills um most of, and uh, let's see what else uh, there was also a bowman dairy those were those were those dairy companies were there for a long long time bowman used to be everywhere in uh, in the old days you had your milk delivered by one of them and uh, they said bowman was uh i think it was one of the top ones and they were all over uh the chicago area which is cool like that and then other companies that made eggnog was borden's um dean's dean foods makes that so they're still around and uh you know, like I said, uh, a lot of people miss uh, having their milk delivered. I think uh, Oberweiss Dairy does that. They do have delivery, the milk deliveries. But uh, I think they do make eggnog, but I never tried it. So uh, I'll look it up uh, later on in the program <laughs> after I get off the air and discuss that. So uh, come Christmas time, if you are invited to a party or you buy some for yourself, just have a glass, you know, just to, you know, uh, just uh, make a toast and say cheers, you know, to the Christmas season, you know, and it's traditional to have eggnog. Like I said before, you like it, fine. If you don't like it, have something else. Okay. Next thing I will discuss now is um, a couple of traditions for Christmas. Um, I talked about that in on previous podcast episodes, and uh, one... I'm trying to once some, mentioned somebody on Facebook that when you open your Christmas presents, some people say Christmas Eve, Christmas morning, or uh, by the time you get out of bed, you you know you're in your pajamas, you race down to the tree and you open your presents, or you go to church that morning and open them, or on Christmas Eve you go to midnight mass. Some people open them before they attend midnight mass, or when midnight mass is over, they come they come home and they open their presents. You know, it's either tradition. My tradition is uh, when I was little, we used to go to church on Christmas Eve at St. Constantine and Helen, Bales Hills. Uh, we don't do that anymore. My mom's too busy cooking, so she doesn't. But she does go to church on Christmas Day because it's a beautiful cer- ceremony. I mean, not ceremony, liturgy. Forgive me for that. And uh, it's also my father's name's day. His name was Chris. And uh, and so we celebrate his name's day. My mom would go uh, go to church, light a candle for him. You know, we celebrate Christmas on his name's day. Uh, My father, he took Christmas day off. I think he did. Uh, I don't think there was a time where he didn't. He did work on Christmas. Maybe a couple of times when I was little, but it was he loved spending the day with us. He didn't like to go anywhere, other people's houses. I don't know why. He didn't mind company over, but uh, he just didn't want to go. He wanted to stay with us, which is nice because I, I hardly saw him when I was growing up because he worked on weekends at the County Hilton Hotel, and uh, so he, my mom would make a wonderful meal. Um, traditionally, she will make uh, Mela Makarna, their honey dip cookies. She'll uh, do those today. She'll dip them. She already made the cookies. Uh, Christmas Eve, she'll make the pastizza, which is Greek lasagna. And uh, for Christmas Day, we'll have leg of lamb with potatoes, salad, you know, and uh, it's nice. So traditionally, when we come home from church on Christmas Day, we will have pastizza. We will have the Greek lasagna, and it's wonderful. I've tried others, people's, but see, it's not the same. I don't know what it is. I don't know what they put in. I don't know, or it's the way they make it. You know, uh, there are a couple of places that are close, you know, a couple of Greek restaurants that come close to that, but uh, she makes it wonderful. I tell my mom to slow down because she's 86 years old, so, but she's, uh, you know, she's like a machine. She, and she wants to do this because uh, she loves us and she, Wants us to have a wonderful Christmas, and I look forward. And uh, you know, I've been dieting; I've been trying to cut down. But you know, this is Christmas. I don't want to do. I don't want to just eat a bowl of yogurt and a banana, or you know, like rice cake. <laughs> I want to have this because uh, my mom's not going to be around, you know, forever. So I might as well enjoy, you know, her beautiful meals. It really is, and their cookies and their pastries, you know, and. Uh, 
this will be my first Christmas cancer free. I'm looking forward to it. It's wonderful. I, it's, I am blessed. I am so happy. I am excited. It's going to be beautiful. I won't go to church with her. Uh, this I still have bathroom problems, so I got to stay home. So and she's fine with that, you know. But uh, once she comes home, and then we'll start the holiday going. Okay. And then uh, one more thing I like to discuss is uh, yesterday. I watched the movie Being the Ricardos again, starring Nicole Kidman and Javier Bardem as Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. And uh, I saw the first, uh, saw the movie on Tuesday, December 21st. I loved it. And, uh, but I watched it again last night, this time with my brother and my mom. And they loved it. They liked it very much. And uh, I noticed one of my favorite scenes in the movie, it has nothing to do with I Love Lucy it's sort of related to it is when Lucille Ball uh, had her own radio show. This is before I love Lucy and it was called my favorite husband. And uh, it was there for, and the scene in the radio show, it was about maybe a minute or two. And uh, there was an announcer and he introduced Lucille Ball to my favorite husband. That was the name of the radio show. And they had the sponsor for Jello and they had the jingle, that famous jingle uh, from the, all the way back in the old days of radio when Jack Benny uh, had his own show. And he, it was his sponsor. and But they also sponsor Lucille Ball's show. And the jingle, I can't get out of my head. I love that scene. So I'm going to play that jingle right now. And it's from 1955. It's a, it's a radio jingle. And uh, you will understand what I'm talking about. So sit back and enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. That's Jell-O. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O pudding. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O tap. The Elka pudding just so Okay, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial. Uh, yeah, I can't get it out of my head. That jingle is... Uh, infectious it's crazy you know and uh you can find it on youtube if you look around uh so uh i just that jingle was in the movie being the ricardos and uh was when lucia ball did her radio show my favorite husband i'll talk a little bit about that right now uh, a little history of that uh it starred uh lucia ball and uh the other actor's name was Richard Denning, and uh, he's famous for, I believe, playing the governor of Hawaii in the TV series Hawaii Five-0 later on in the sixties and in the late sixties and seventies. And uh, let's see, and then um, they played the Liz, uh, Lucia Ball played the Liz Cooper, her, her husband Richard Denning. His name was George Cooper, and he worked for a bank. He, for his boss was Mr. Atterbury, and uh, he, he was played by a couple of uh, actors. And um, but the most famous actor that played for him was Gail Gordon. So we all know him from Armis Brooks as Mr. Conklin. He was played the principal. Also, Mr. Mooney from the Lucy Show. Mrs. Carmichael. <laughs> I always love that. And his wife is played by B. Benadere. She was famous for. On the George Burns Gracie Allen show, also a uh, voice of Betty Rubble on the Flintstones and Petticoat Junction. That was her last acting role. So, and uh, and uh, she also had a maid, uh, her name was Katie. And uh, <coughs> excuse me, so anyway, um, that show, uh, the radio show premiered as a one time special on July 5th, 1948, and uh. So uh, let's see. And then uh, it ran for about two years. And uh, so the sponsor was Jello. And then um, in the movie, being the Ricardos, they they showed uh, you know the uh, the radio show that, you know on the stage. And then um, 
They have the announcer says, it's time for My Fair Husband starring Lucille Ball. And then Lucille Ball would enter Jello, Jello, everybody, or like, hello, everybody. And Nicole Kidman did that in the movie, and she did it perfectly. And then, uh, so, and then the singers started singing the jingle, and it was perfect. It was beautiful. And uh, you can't get that, uh, like I said before, you can't get it on your mind. And then, and then the, uh, the announcer, his name was Bob Lamond. He did a lot of uh, announcing for her, her, Lucy Ball's shows. You know, the Lucy Show, I Love Lucy, Here's Lucy. She did. Uh, he did all of them. And now uh, he's saying, and now Lucy Ball with Richard Denning and Liz and George Cooper, two people who live together and like it. <laughs> Sounds kind of, uh, I don't know, suggestive <laughs> like that. So there was 124 episodes. And it aired from July 23rd, 1948 through March 31st, 1951. And uh, I think like a, a few months later, uh, Lucille Ball's daughter, Lucy Arnaz, was born. I think she was by in July. So, And then uh, when the show, I don't know if it was over. And uh, then uh, there were some executives from CBS. Uh the Colombian Broadcasting Network, and they asked uh, Lucille Ball if she wanted to have her own TV series. And she said yes, but she wanted uh, not her uh, her husband on the radio show. She wanted her real husband, Dizzy Arnaz. And they're like balked at her. They're like, no, no way. You know, because um, it seemed like they were racist. Like they didn't want him. They didn't think he would act on it, but she insisted. And then they had a meetings with that, and then I think they relented. They really did. And then, then they filmed the pilot uh, for "I Love Lucy," you know. And it was just Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. Uh, the Mertzes were not in there. Vivian Vance, William Farley were not in the pilot. They came later. They were cast in the later show. And uh, but and then they were sponsored by Philip Morris, the cigarette company, and the rest was history. So uh, if you happen to hear the radio show, uh, My Favorite Husband, I think you can find it on YouTube or they, they come in CDs. They have all the episodes or there's websites, uh, you know, because it's public domain. They're all available. I listen to them on my DVDs of Idol of Lucy. I, they have like one episode per disc or something like that. There were about, I don't know how many were in there, probably about mm, 10 or 20. I listened to them and I loved it. I really do. But it's radio. You don't look at the TV screen. You just uh, sit back and relax and read or, look, you know, just listen and imagine what they're saying and what they're doing. It's kind of fun. It really is fun. So, uh, like I said before, I watched the movie again last night. I loved it. And uh, hopefully I'll buy it on DVD when it comes out. I wish I could see it. I wish I watched it in a the theater, but I couldn't. Uh, because I explained... Uh, I have issues, you know, going to the bathroom, so I can't sit still. But I'm glad I, or I, it's on Amazon Prime Video. If you want to catch it and watch it, please do. It's a wonderful movie. I loved it. Okay. That'll be all for today. Uh, I will not do another uh, podcast this weekend because Christmas falls on Saturday, and I will not do a podcast. Who's going to listen to me on Christmas? I mean, people will be celebrating, and I'll be doing that. Maybe Sunday on the 26th, I'll probably do a New Year's Eve show because uh, I don't think I'll do one New Year's Eve or New Year's Day. You know, I'll be celebrating, so probably that Sunday. Uh, I'll see what I'll discuss on that day. You'll be surprised. I have an idea, but you'll be very surprised for that. Okay. So uh, this is Pete Costanez, and I'm your host for Vanish Chicago and Stories, the podcast. This is episode 91, season four. Thank you for joining me. And uh, everyone have a very merry, merry Christmas and uh, and happy holidays. And please be healthy, you know, stay healthy. And uh, I love you all. God bless you. And uh, so right now, bye-bye from me. And here's Ray Rayner saying bye-bye for now. Take it away, Ray. So long, everybody. We have to go. Bye-bye-bye. <laughs>